So one of the many things we do in my lab is try to understand the pitfalls that generative AI can entail. One of the aspects is like deep fakes. It's becoming increasingly easy to generate fake videos and pictures and impressions of real world people, objects, phenomena, and harder and harder to distinguish between what's real and what's fake on social media. And you can imagine the kind of societal implications of a technology like this. If nothing that you see on the web is true, then what do you do? So my lab researches ways to identify deep fakes disrupt the deep fake generation pipeline. So make it harder for adversarial actors and malicious actors to generate convincing deep fakes in situations. Welcome to my office. I'm Chinmay Hegde. I'm an associate professor of computer science and engineering and also jointly appointed with electrical and computer engineering at NYU Tandem. So my research focuses on theory and practice of artificial intelligence. So think of technologies like you know, ChatGPT. My group research how these work, as well as how to make them better, more efficient, and cheaper. We are living in the world of artificial intelligence. And it's impacting virtually every domain of society. In the next five years, I expect technologies to become even more pervasive. And therefore, my group tries to study you know, how to make these more accessible, more beneficial to society. So one of the key questions that my lab tries to answer is how to democratize the research behind AI, and how to best use utilize the resources that we at NYU and other academic institutions across the world, how best we can contribute to the state of the art. We have derived inspiration from cryptography. So think of, for example, if you have ever gone to a website and it has asked you to solve a CAPTCHA, which is one of those things that you click to make sure to prove that you are a human. So there, the onus is on you to prove that you are indeed real and not a bot which is using the website. So similarly, our approach is to put the onus on the deep faker to prove that they're actually not faking somebody else, right? So instead of making it a passive detection system, which is, oh, this is a deep fake, this is not a deep fake, we actively intervene in the detection process to get the potential adversary to certify that they're actually real versus fake. And by changing the balance, this helps increase the detection accuracy of these systems considerably over and above the state of the art. One of the big directions that my lab has been focusing on is on the data generation side. So if you think about how artificial intelligence is developed, there is the core architecture, right, the system which is implementing the AI. The secret sauce which fuels this architecture is the data. My recent focus has been on trying to understand the data side, right, like keeping everything else fixed, you know, what is the best data that creates the AI model. And for that, we have enabled a series of tools in the data curation space, you know, including new metrics for data quality, new software systems for curating massive data sets and new ways to evaluate performance of AI models on specific data sets. So a deepfake is something where you have a, an imposter but their appearance has been modified to look like somebody else. So in this case, so all these are fake images. These are faked and this person is trying to fake somebody else's appearance, right? So what happens is that in the standard setting, right, they are able to change their appearance to somebody else. But then what our system does is issue challenges to the deep faker. So for example, I might ask the deep faker to move their hand in front of their face. And once they do that, you can see that the deep fake quality is degraded. You have weird artifacts which begin to show up. And this is because existing deep fakes have not been trained with these kinds of interventions in mind. Right. So with carefully designed interventions, we can degrade the quality of deepfakes and make it more obvious for detection mechanisms to succeed. So let's say that you are interviewing somebody over Zoom and you suspect that the interviewee is not who they seem to be. So what our system would do would issue challenges to that suspect. So we would ask them to physically manipulate their environment, maybe by occlusion, or perhaps by illumination changes, or we would ask them to move their head from side to side. So by manipulating the physical environment of the suspect, if they were indeed genuine, uh, they would pass all these tests. But if they were not genuine, then at least one of these tests would fail and therefore expose the identity of the person. A significant direction that we are pursuing is AI for biodiversity. So think of, for example, all the, of the species in the planet. Discovery of new species has been traditionally done by humans, but conceivably in the near future, we'll have AI assistants 
helping scientists perform the same task. So how do we best leverage today's AI tools for mapping out the biodiversity on the planet. One of the recent collaborations we have is with entomologists who work in the Amazon rainforest. So they collect fresh specimens for us, which are consisting of mostly unknown insect species. So they take images of these potentially unknown species and send us these images. And we've built a system which can process these images, compare these images with known specimens, and identify subtle features which are indicative of a new species. To the human eye, this is extremely challenging to do and requires years of expertise. But what we are hoping to do is to build AI systems which can do this automatically and therefore accelerate the discovery of species by several orders of magnitude. This is a sheet that a collaborator in Ecuador and they have this white sheet that they deploy and then bugs come and get attached to this sheet and these guys take a picture and then release the bugs again. Right? So we get this kind of image and our AI system does is identify each specimen in this image and then declare it to be either a known species or unknown species. A proportion of these are already known to humanity. Others are completely new. The proportion of insects on the planet which have been actually named and discovered is less than one-fifth. So our system quickly zooms into what's known. The stuff that's not known, we can hand off to an expert entomologist to do further research upon. I envision this kind of technology to be widely applicable. It's easier to do species discovery of charismatic fauna because it's visually obvious ones are new versus which ones are not. Insects are harder to do because the visual features are much more subtle and fine-grained. But I expect this to be widely applicable, not just for insects big project that we're working on is AI for fluid flow simulations. So with the growth of AI's impact, my group's ambition has also grown. So we are going after every project that we can get our hands on because we know that there is impact to be had there. Primarily, I focus on projects which are in the engineering domain and which have some sort of societal benefit. My technical training is in signal and image processing. So think of, for example, building you know, cameras and understanding images and ex extracting information from images. Somewhere along the way, I became interested in machine learning. So instead of humans designing algorithms to extract information from images, you know, can machines learn interesting aspects uh, from images themselves? And that led me to go deeper into computer vision, which is a sort of sister field of image processing. And computer vision led me to artificial intelligence because at some level images is one example of data but there is you know, other modalities of data including you know, text code and tabular data and so on. So that was the sort of trajectory by which I finally ended up to where I am right now. So very grateful to be part of NYU Tandon at NYU community. One of the top places to do AI research and very excited to see you know, what's ahead.